Hi, this is Christopher Bruza, and I'm going to run through a rifle I put together for this year's hunting season. Uh, it's based on a Remington 700 action. It's chambered in 338 Federal, and uh, I have a suppressor on it. Put it together to be a quiet um, and shorter range deer rifle. Uh, I hunt in North Carolina, uh, northeastern North Carolina, Halifax County, and uh, it's a lot of dense coverage. Uh, I got a bunch of pine forest. We've got um, not much open space, uh, some mixed hardwoods, and uh, it primarily is all surrounding a swamp. Uh, so you have a lot of vines and things like that. So I wanted a shorter package um, and I wanted a way to decrease the recoil on this rifle and a muzzle brake. I don't hunt with hearing protection. So the next best thing was a suppressor. Uh, it adds some length, but it is what it is. So I'm going to start down here at the butt and work my way forward. Uh, this is a Macmillan Classic stock in their forest camo. It has just your standard Packmeyer recoil pad on it. Um, the comb is rather low, just like any non-adjustable comb. Uh, so I put this, actually on all my hunting rifles, I put this Triad Tactical uh, stock pack on it, which houses, um, you know, you can put your ammo in there, uh, cleaning cloth, whatever you want. So on this side, I've got two recesses for my sling, which is a tab sling. Uh, I have them on the left side uh, so I can put the rifle over me when I'm walking out in the woods. And if I need to, I can pull it up take a shot if I spook a deer and can actually get a shot at it. Um, the, the stock is bed, um, both the bottom metal and the action, and I only bed it up to the recoil pad for when I change barrels, I won't need to re-bed it. Um, so this is a stock Remington 700 action. I bought it as a bare action at stainless steel. Uh, long rifles trued it for me uh, and fit the barrel. So they also did the Cerakote, but the bolt on here is a one piece Pacific tool and gauge bolt. Uh, I didn't want to, I wanted something with a M16 style extractor. I wanted a solid bolt handle. I didn't want to worry, have to worry about it coming off uh, as some of the 700s do occasionally. It's never happened to me, but with one piece, there's nothing to worry about. Um, so it's fluted and again, the M16 style extractor. Uh, it's a straight bolt handle and I believe this is a PTG knob as well. The bolt is Cerakoted, just like the rest of the rifle, in OD green. Uh, the trigger is a Timney 533. The bottom metal is Pacific Tool and Gauge Oberndorf, um, which is a more reliable design that doesn't come open during recoil on a very heavy recoiling rifle, which this isn't, but uh, I was buying bottom metal, so I figured get the better one. Uh, it's a hinged floor plate to drop your rounds out, top feed. Uh, so the scope here is a Schmidt and Bender Zenith 1.1 to 4 by 24. 24 uh, and it has the FD9 reticle which is a 
It's kind of like a number eight or a A8 as Schmittenbender would call it with a circle around where it transitions from the thinner inner section to the wider bars on the outside and it has daylight visible center dot. I have two of these scopes. I run the other one on my 35 Whalen and it's a great scope. They've got its second focal plane, but again, it's a shorter range rifle. Um, it's got the Posicon turrets, which aren't meant to be adjusted in the field, uh, but no issues with it. Zeroing, it's absolutely no problem. It's held on by Badger Ordnance uh, rings. These are steel rings, 0.823 inch height. And below it, you have a Badger Ordnance 20 MOA Picatinny rail. Um, solid setup. I run this on just about every hunting rifle I have and never had any issues. This has a Badger Ordnance recoil lug. Uh, I think it's 312 thousandths of an inch thick. It's surface ground on both sides and pinned to the receiver with two small pins. Um, going forward here, this is a Bartling number four, what they call a bull sporter barrel. It is a nine inch twist with five hour rifling. The reason I went with such a large barrel, this is the, the largest barrel that this stock can, can fit. Uh, it gets fairly narrow up here this is the largest barrel you can fit in this Macmillan stock. And the reason it's so large is I had the full intention of running a suppressor on it and I wanted the largest shoulder I could get because this is a 338 uh, caliber suppressor and it's actually made for the 338 uh, Lapua and it's large, it's heavy. So I wanted the biggest shoulder I could get uh, just so I didn't have to worry about it and hopefully have better precision. Below here, you see an Atlas bipod, which is on a rail. Uh, I don't hunt with the bipod, but I do zero the rifle on a bipod. I didn't want to have a sling swivel down here to put a Harris bipod on, which I really, I don't like the Harris bipods. I'll use them, but if I can, I'm gonna put Atlas on it. Um, so this is just the PSR model Atlas. It rides around in the rifle case with it. Um, then here, we have an AAC Titan Titanium. It's a 338 uh, suppressor, rather large, and I probably would have done 358 Winchester on this build if I had found a reasonable 35 caliber suppressor. But most, from what I've seen, they jump from 338 to 50 cal, and I, I don't want a 50 cal on there. It has decent internal volume, so it's fairly quiet, and it does a good job of reducing the recoil. So just a simple hunting rifle, uh, which I take most days. I, I harvested two deer with it so far this year. Uh, we still have a few weeks of season left, and it put both down within about 10 yards where they are shot, uh, through and through. Um, quite a bit of internal damage. Uh, both were heart shots, and there was, I like to take the heart home and we cook that up the night I shoot a deer and not there were no salvageable parts on the heart it was destroyed um, and one thing I did forget the scope base were, were opened up to number eight screws and true that's something I do on any Remington 700 rifle I have so thanks for watching and enjoy